Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. Recently, I introduced you to a bowline variant that I put out. I'm calling it the JRB Bowline. And today I'm going to show you four configurations, situations whereby we would use this in a canopy anchor. To do so, I have three different 40 foot systems, and I'll be showing those, those four options. Okay, so. I need to make sure you're aware I don't use SRT very much and the reason why is because you know this is 40 feet of rope I just carry more I carry 60 to 80 feet and I'm able to execute DSRT in most of my hunting situations there's still some situations where where I'd use that very same system for SRT with a basal anchor or something like that but there's many of you out there who your priority besides safety is carrying an absolute minimum of amount of rope or perhaps you already have a rope that that you use for rappel and you're converting it into an SRT system whatever the reason I'm going to show you the situations for an SRT canopy anchor using the JRB Bolin so let's start with this simple system here this system has nothing configured in advance except for the JRB Bolin. I've got a longhorn loop and I'm going to be using that as my friction device. So it's not on the line. I've got to put it on the line. I'm going to uncoil the rope and show you what's on it. On one end, I've got a JRB Bolin. On the other end, I have the JRB end loop and a tiny little micro raider rigging carabiner. You can get these at a Canyon Outfitters with all your other goodies. I'm standing next to a tree that's got a piece of paracord in it and I'm going to give you guys, I mean literally this is the way I walk up to a tree and here on a piece of wood see my video for power, uh, throw ball basics and paracord presets. This is how I stash them. It's a pretty inconspicuous object in the woods just a, a branch on a tree. No one would notice this paracord unless they were looking further up in the tree. But why don't you take a tour up into the canopy and take a look at this tree crotch. I know for a, for certainty that this tree crotch is exactly 35 feet. And the reason I know that is because I had 60 feet of throw line and it was dancing right about at my head height. I'm going to tie the line to the JRB end loop. Why, why am I tying it? Well, because in order for this reliably to pass through that loop, the carabiner can sometimes get in the way. And so I'm showing you these four options from my least favorite to my favorite or to, or to the one with the most innovation. So I'm going to send this up over and anticipating that I'm going to simply run it through, right through the, the JRB Bowen. I'm going to anticipate that and, and pass it through. Now, I never like to send up a rope that's not retrievable. If I want to abort the mission and just totally abort the mission, I'm going to want to put my retrieval cord on right away. So again, another advantage of DSRT, there's no retrieval line. So let me get that together. I'm not trying to talk you out of SRT. I, my priority is that you're safe. If you prefer an SRT climb and you want to uh, take on the responsibility of rigging, that's no problem. So here's my retrieval cord. I'm gonna put it on the loop on the other end of the JRB Bolin. So that's ready to retrieve. And I'm gonna send this up. Now I want you to follow that. I want you to follow that into the canopy as that's going up. And at right about here, I'm gonna pass that line through. Can you see that there? I'm gonna pass it through. I usually just give it a good tug and it passes right through. Let's. Let's show you that a couple times to prove it wasn't luck. Now, if you had a little carabiner there, that might be a problem. So I'd run this up into the canopy 
and it looks like my retrieval line is just barely long enough and and I would I would secure it there and I would execute my climb so that's method one let's do the retrieval okay now we're gonna start over completely and this time I can use the rigging carabiner so I'd arrive at the tree you know assuming I had an end loop here I put my little rigging carabiner on I get the end of the rope and this time I'm gonna simply clip it in so that's one thing I didn't have to tie again it could be even colder than today it's about about 32 degrees today we climb in a lot colder conditions than, than this and we might might be in darkness and we might not have you know the optimal use of our fingers we don't want to take our gloves off the less knots we can tie in the woods the better especially stuff that requires fine dexterity okay so let's get my my head together I'm gonna to just start pulling this up into the tree pulling it up into the tree you'll notice I didn't pass it through the end and the reason why is because this time check this out I'm going to take my JRB Bowling. I'm going to straddle the power cord. I'm going to straddle it and I'm going to toggle it. Here's a quality carabiner. That's a Raider. I'm going to pop it on there. And can you get in and see that? You see what I did here? I have the Bowling. And this would work with any double loop knot, but I've never seen anybody rig it this way. Any secure double loop knot. I can straddle the power cord, toggle it, and put this up. So even though it's got a little carabiner on there, I can get that right through. And then up to the top. cinch that in place okay so that's method two I'm gonna bring that down now again I would need to put my friction hitch on both of these methods one and method two in order to climb I'd have to tie my friction hitch there's quite a quite a lot to do I don't use either of these methods in a hunting situation but I want you to see the options Okay, so I got that all cleaned up. This is system one. I'm putting that aside. And remember, I didn't even take the time to climb, and I, I would have had to tie the Longhorn Agile. Let's get those out of the way, and let's take a look at system two. System two is a pre-configured SRT system. What do I mean by pre-configured? This system and that system are exactly the same, with one exception. I have a Longhorn Agile already on the end of the line with my end loop and the reason this is significant is because with that stand-up feature of the JRB Bolin we can thread this through in midair all right let's give it a try here's the power cord preset and I've got I've got it this is the way I usually have them in the woods there's a loop on the end just a small loop on the end of my power cord preset I have a convention where I always keep that on the right side and so I can get my little rigging carabiner and put it in the end loop and also capture both parts of the Longhorn Agile got them captured and so this is a pretty sleek contraption I'll get the other end of the rope with my JRB Bolin. And let's watch this rig. I'm going to pass it through the JRB Bolin. I've got to make sure I do it the right way so that it so that it stands up. Okay. And I start.
Okay, so I don't want my canopy anchor to disappear and I always put my retrieval cord on it. Okay, so ready? Here we go. Let's follow this up. I'll go slow. Try to keep you in the sun. Remember, this is 40 feet of rope and a 35 foot crotch. It's about as much as I can do. You see how that passes? Now, we do need to be able to see it. But in the hunting conditions, even if, if it's too dark to, to shoot, there's always enough light to see that. I've been testing this a lot. I've got nice large loops about the size of a softball on the bowline. Up it goes. It's locked in place up there. And now I'm going to bring it down. Let's go up and watch that one more time. Watch these pass on the way down. No problem. This has got the best performance, better than Scott's Lock Bowling. All right, let me clean that up and I'll show you the the last way and the system I'm most likely to be seen using. This system is also a 40 foot system. This system has three friction hitches on it. Why? Because I use it for both SRT and for hitch climbing. So let me just show it to you real quick. If I was hitch climbing, you know my hitch climbing method where I, I put a hitch on a tree and advance it up with a maverick hitch. I need a friction hitch that's holding towards the end of the rope here it is on the one end and then I need one going the other direction right at the other end of the rope I need a friction hitch headed the other way well, I'm gonna take both of those friction hitches and put them off at the end of the rope they won't be used and at the other end of this 40 foot system I've got a friction hitch not headed towards the end but headed towards the middle of the rope this is the way I configure all of my three hitch systems with an alternate you can't really get it wrong all three hitches are facing in the opposite direction so what am I going to do with this system I'm going to SRT climb and the only thing I have to put on it's not any fine tuning all I have to do is build a JRB bowling here on the end of the rope. I don't have to worry about all this junk on the end. It's not going to impede my ability to tie the JRB bowling. Okay, and I'm going I'm to do it right now. We want to err on the side of using more rope and having a larger loop size than a small one. It's just going to make things easier to pass. So how much do I take? I take about three feet of end. That's about three feet of end here. And then I'll start tying the knot. Now, you're not going to be able to follow. This is not a knot tying video, of course. This is a real world implementation and usage of the knot. But we have to tie it properly or it won't stand up properly. So you want to practice that at home. Get all those details ironed out. Okay, I've got a JRB bowling tied here with a pretty big, pretty big loop. And let's test its ability to stand up. Pretty good. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take these, the, the loops and I'll just kind of fuse them together and twist them. But see how that stands up? See how that stands up? We got to pass a friction hitch through there. It's got to stand up right here before it leaves the ground or we're going to have trouble. Okay, let's get the other end and send it for a ride. I got my friction hitch. It's a single 
loop Longhorn Agile. Okay. Make sure I'm putting it through the right way. And I'll start to send this up. So right now, this rig is, besides the fact that I tied it in the woods, it's the same as the last scenario, it's just that I'm using a different rope. And as this leaves me, that there's some extra friction, friction hitches on the end. Let's put on our retrieval line. All right, let's follow that up and let's see if we can't pass this through. Right through. Let's do it again. You're following that? Yes. And I'm going to send that all the way up. And so here, what I'm going to, you know, it was intentional that I chose a tree that is 30, that's got a crotch that's 35 feet. Because even with 40 feet of rope, I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I could just barely climb this. Let's see if I can. Look, I can just barely fit my guard hitch on the end. So in terms of hunting height, this would be a good hunting height right about here. We don't need to go all the way up. It's just what the forest gave us in terms of crotch height. And I'll come on down. Of course, the retrieval's the same. I'll get you on your way. The point here is that that, that Jeremy Bolin for the SRT team is a really nice option to have and it's one knot that I do want you to have well rehearsed and be able to tie it in the woods um, because there are situations where we want to use it but back to the beginning I, I don't have to tie a whole lot myself because I'd rather carry the extra rope and use the DSRT all right guys thank you very much